we call on the Deputy Minister to do the introduction. Today we have the Ministry of Water Resources and other MPs. They will now do the introduction. We will go to the press briefing proper because we are running out of time now. The Deputy Minister. Thank you, Nancy. Um, yes, I thought you were going to present briefs before, but thank you for saving time. On behalf of Minister of Information and Communication, our dignitary is here. Um, I will not bother you with introducing the personalities. There is somebody who is competent to do so. As you can see on the screen, we have deforestation of the water catchments, and an interministerial committee has been set up to address this very important issue. I'm sure it's an issue that all of us sitting here are very deeply connected to, as much the same way as the general public. And it is important to get into the business of. Thank you very much, Deputy uh, Minister of Information. Um, <clears throat> I think I'll start by making a little correction. My name is Engineer uh, Philip Karim Lantana. Um, I'm happy to be here to to start a process which I think will help us a lot in restoring the lost um, lost environment. Um, before I even continue, I want to say that the government of uh, the new the new direction, headed by the by His Excellency uh, President Bio, has thought it fit to put together a committee, interministerial committee, to look at the issues affecting land, water catchment area, and um, and mangroves. If you all are aware, you can see that most of the mangroves are lost. To, to human activities, as well as the forest cover, is really uh, being reduced by the day. So this committee that was set up comprised nine ministries. The Ministry of the Environment as chair, and the Ministry of Water Resources as deputy chair, the Ministry of Works, the Ministry of Internal Affairs, the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Local Government, the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources, and the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Country Planning. These are the ministers who are having the task to ensure that the activities ongoing in these areas, which is causing us environmental problems, are checked. And um, we know the repercussions uh, when we have this, this um, these activities carried out by, by very, very citizens of the country. And we need to check it as, as fast as possible. So today we are going to have a press briefing. Uh, it's one of the activities we are, which we are undertaking. We will also engage the communities uh, where these things are taking place to ensure that we work with them so that um, these activities will be stopped or checked. We will also um, do a public notice indicating what steps will be taken against people who will flout laws which are put by government. And we will also do some physical demarcations of these catchment areas. Um, to conclude, uh, today's press briefing will comprise uh, me giving this opening statement and also we'll call on Guma to do a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation on the various uh, damages done to the, to the environment. And um, after that, we will now encourage the press to ask the relevant questions. I thank you very much. Uh, that's the end of my statement. Thank you very much, engineer. So, um, may we now kindly call on Michelle of Uma. He will introduce himself and proceed with the presentation. After this key presentation, unless there may be additional technical interventions, after this presentation, we'll bring in the Minister for Works and Public Assets to make a three-minute presentation on status of roads and we'll open up to the interaction. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ministers. Uh, 
ladies and gentlemen of the fourth estate. Uh, we're going to present deforestation on the water catchments. <clears throat> this really was put together for the Inter-Industrial Committee on water catchments and forest reserves in the western area. Although you see the same thing playing right across the country. Now, if you look at this bottle, you see the Guma Dam here. This is the Guma Dam. And in various locations, number two, Bobo, my 13, Bagafa, you see how human development is moving towards the Guma Dam. And later on, I'll highlight why we still need the Guma Dam, which is the main facility for water supply in Freetown. Uh, you see the line here, I don't know if it's clear. This, this is the green belt, as proclaimed by a statutory instrument by Parliament. Meaning there should be there should have been no development beyond the screen towards the forest. And as you can see, it has been breached in various locations here, here, and over there. Uh, let me just zoom in on my 13. This this is a treatment plant for free time. This is a dam you, you see there. This is a green belt, and you see all of these areas. Uh, deforested, and now you see how's going on. So, if you extrapolate in a few years, of course, all of here would be inundated with housing development. And when that happens, it will be a disaster in terms of water supply for food. Uh, let me just show you some other picture and, and to, to highlight how fast the deforestation is happening. This photograph was taken in 2019 February, and, and the same area was photographed. In August 2020, and you can see the massive deforestation uh, within that period. That's what we're doing. Now, in my 13 in particular, the danger is we, stick, we, we have the water supply infrastructure in the bush. So when they set the bush on fire, it also endangers the, the water infrastructure. Like that pipe is the main pipe to Freetown. It was set on fire uh, sometime last year. and. In a few months, you see, we start having breaches on that pipe, and each time that happens, we have to shut down water supply to free time to repair it. Uh, this one also, the, the other activity we are observing in the Western Area Peninsula is the operation of quarries and breaking stones. Like this one is a CSE quarry, and it's only 1.8 kilometers from the border. When they blast, it's like, if you're here, it's like you're standing next to where the blast is. And you can actually feel the, the vanishing. So, threats to water supply. Like I highlighted, the main Guma facility is responsible for 95% of the water supply. To put in. And the reason why we need catchments, the reason why we need the trees surrounding the area where we collect water is because it protects from sunlight, it creates a micro environment. Uh, that's conducive for capturing water and also ensuring that the water is of sufficient quality so we don't have to spend a lot of money to treat it. Uh, it, it provides good rainfall. That area, it's, it's not a coincidence that that particular area is the area where you have the highest rainfall in Freetown, just because the forest exists. So when you, cut, when you cut down the forest, then the rainfall reduces, like we experienced this year. Uh, this, Last year, yes. So the existing facility is gravity-based, meaning the cost of operations is very, very cheap. Because I've had arguments like, oh, why don't we go to Rokel and get water? You can go to Rokel and get water, but if you do that, it will be 10 times more expensive than what we have now. So it, it makes sense for us to protect what we have uh, until we, we start building new facilities. And also, in particular, the development at number two, which is also about two kilometers from the dam, exposes the dam. Uh, before, you stand at number two, you wouldn't even know that there was a dam there. Now you stand at number two, you see the dam clearly. The, the other effects is on raw water supply. Now you know that, of course, we're not supplying all communities throughout Africa. So most communities rely on the water supply within their own communities, uh, so whether it's uh, boroughs, wells, or surface sources. Now, what happens is, once you cut the forest, the water table drops, and all those wells, they, they come dry. So, um, 
these are the results of raw water supply. Increased sunshine, increased evaporation, decreased rainfall, increased erosion. And also, the forest itself has a potential to be, uh, <clears throat> to, because of biodiversity and tourists coming and wanting to see the birds, etc. You know, it, it's, it's a, a, a huge potential for ecotourism. We destroy that, we, we destroy the, the opportunity as well. And also, when we affect the water supply, then it also damages the economic potential of the nation. Let me just show you the scenario. What we have observed happens. First, they cut down the trees. And this is where I think the community leaders are comfortable, I think, with the village headmen, because activities like this cannot take place without their knowledge. So the trees get cut down. Then it gets set on fire. The next step, you see charcoal burners coming in, converting the, the trees to charcoal, and then you start seeing beacons coming up, fences coming up, and houses coming up. Uh, again, let me highlight this area. This is number two. This was February 2019. That's just a few years ago. It was lush green. The same area, June 2020, already houses have started coming up. If you go there now, the nearest tree will be more than a kilometer. <coughs> so it's quite devastating what we are seeing. Uh, the, other, the other thing we have observed is the growth in marijuana farming throughout the peninsula. You see all these patches, these patches you see on satellite images. These are all jamba farms. And I think last, last week uh, the police apprehended some people uh, in this activity. The other effect is now here, this is what to look. So upstream, you have jamba farms going on, and they use all sorts of chemicals in order to grow the plants. And all these chemicals are filtering down into these communities. So you know, a lot of health risks as a result of that. Now, we have observed tree cutting, ramparts, bush fires, and charcoal burning, housing development, illegal farming, activities, quarry blasting, and stone mining. And these are the communities most at, most at risk from lack of water supply because of this. Hamilton and Mambo, you remember the waterfall yeah, yeah. a few years ago, that's gone. Uh, communities east of Freetown, Kisi, Wellington, Calabata, and Town. Regent, Gloucester, Friday College. What's happening at Friday College is really pathetic because they have a brand new water supply infrastructure, but no water, just because of the deforestation happening in the area in Gloucester where they're collecting water. Hastings, Waterloo. These are just some of the communities uh, being affected. Now, there is a statutory instrument for the protection of the Western Area Peninsula Forest Reserve. It's called the Green Belt. And this was uh, May, the statutory instrument was passed in May 2013, but it's a proclamation of the Wildlife Conservation Act of 1972. So this really needs to be implemented because this provides a clear boundary where development should take place and where development should not take place. And all we need to do now is grab the chair and is grab the money. Ministry of Water Resources or Ministry of Environment, I'm sure we would like to face this. But then it's a very big area it will cost a lot of money. Thank you very much. With that, I pass you on to We have some videos, but I don't know whether we want to show them. So whilst, whilst questions are being asked, we can sh we can show. How long will it be? Uh, just a few clips. Sure, sure, sure. This is John Obey. This is John Obey. <coughs> and this is about four kilometers into the forest reserve. A huge area cleared, stone mining going on, lots of tree cutting and logging.
you very much. did was to make a cabinet paper which we took to to cabinet uh, make some recommendations and uh, the cabinet cabinet approved those recommendations which we intend to implement now but of course to implement most of what was recommended requires funding and um, we we hope to engage Ministry of Finance and other partners to help us with that. Also, in addition to that, recently, uh, about um, a week ago, I presented a cabinet paper on the Water Fund, uh, which, is, which, we, which is a platform to get funding from various sources to help us protect our catchment areas. So I think uh, with that, uh, we are, we, we're very hopeful that we will check what is going on and even reverse some of the things that have already happened. I think uh, that's all I can add to what has been said so far. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Minister, and thank you, uh, Engineer Penge, for the presentation and the videos as well. So just for the record, this again is an interministerial committee to address the threats to our catchments, and that interministerial committee is represented here by the Ministry of Environment. I understand that ministry is chairing the... Yes, chairing the... Is chairing the technical committee. We also have the Ministry of Water Resources, Ministry of Works. Um, not all of them may be here, but we have Ministry of Internal Affairs as well, and we have the minister here. We also have the Ministry of Defense on this, Ministry of Tourism, Ministry of Local Government, Ministry of Mines and the Ministry of Lands. So those are the constituent ministries for the Interministerial Committee. So just before we take questions or comments on the presentation, um, we may wish to get the Minister of Works and Public Assets to do a short presentation. I'm sure we are all very much keen on knowing the status of road projects. So I bring in Mr. Rhodes. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister, Ministers of Government, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm happy to be here to give you an update on the road sector. Last year, as a government, we made significant progress in the road sector. We completed the construction of the Walinchi, Mashaka, and Lincoln Wing University Regent Roads. This year, we are going to make more progress as all donor funded roads will finally be completed. For example, the Hillside Bypass Road, Lomle Toke, Muyamba Muyamba Junction. Pendembu Kailahu, Bo Bandajuma, Bandajuma Manor River Union Bridge. Also, the Bo Tikonko and Bandajuma Pujan Roads will be completed. Township roads in Freetown, Waterloo, Bo, Kenema, Matu John and Bont will be completed. Also, the roads within the military barracks in Juba will be passed Moriton and Benguima, including 
34 military hospital will be completed. Additionally, the EU funded bridge constructions, namely Mabang, Abele, Muyamba, Amwala, will definitely be completed this year. We will make more progress in the regrouping of 1,740 kilometers of trunk roads across the country. In 2022, we will commence the transformation of four major cable traffic crossing points to bridges, namely Matrujon, Manoa, Gendema, and Tompari. Plans in 2022. We will start the construction of the Betema Matru John Road, Kono Guinea Border Road, and most likely we will also start the Kailahun Koinu Road. It must be noted that. We constructed several feeder roads across the country in 2021, and some are ongoing. Please be informed that the Ministry of Works and Public Assets, SLRE, and other stakeholders have identified the following priority roads to be awarded to capable road construction companies as concessionary contracts for tolling. Kenema Zoru Zimi Road, Sungu Junction Muyamba Road, Bo Yile Matutoka Road, Falaba Krubonla Road, Mano Junction Tongo Bumpe Road, Kambia Guinea Border Road, Bawia Junction Benducha. The reason for this PPP arrangement is due to the fact that our government does not have adequate resources at the moment to undertake the construction of these roads. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. By the way, for those who may want to ask questions, I would like the questions to be limited to what this presentation because I may have to come again with the Director General of SLR to do a holistic presentation on the road network. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Uh, we are going to we are going to re request perhaps a one or two pager on the status of roads and what we anticipate in the immediate short term for, so that we can distribute that to the press. Because I can see uh, you are under so much pressure to write as the minister was. So Mr. Minister, I will have to work with you and the Director General of SLRA to come again, and perhaps at that time you can come with something in writing for the press. Uh, oh, wonderful, wonderful. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we would have to open up now for Q&A, and I will ask Imran Sila to come and coordinate this aspect of the program. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Uh, question now from journalists. Uh, of course, you know the usual rule, name, institution, and question. Please let us restrict our, our questions to our main issues being addressed here. First question. Yeah. Good day. Um, I'm Dunstan Skuruma. I write for the News Dump newspaper, and uh, my question is for the MD Kuma Valley. Um, MD, I want to know what is the what is the status of the project that the CRS and the and the Ministry of Water Resources. Um, um, uh, supposed to implement with regards catchment areas. Um, 
to the committee. I just want to know your plans in strengthening the green belt areas to ensure the green belt is not shifted. Because walking along the peninsula axis, you see people are going more beyond the green belt line. So I have your plans. Sir. The other question to Minister of Works. Mr. Conte, I don't know the, the arrangements for the BTS construction work. BTS? Yes, BTS construction, I think it's awarded to Gento. The work is really slow. The plan was for that work to be completed, I think, by the end of April to June. But nothing for now, we say, only the bridge that they are working on. But the other side of the world, nothing is going on, and this is much. We see Guma Valley again, they have some of their activities digging the road, after which there is no proper maintenance being done in order to put that particular road in proper order again. So what have you done in order for you to facilitate that one to be done in proper manner? Thank you. Just inside the bumper to him. This man no man Please, side with Don't do pregnant questions. Just one. Fire. This is for the Ministry of Old Time. In the area of Ireland, what is your ministry doing to protect the Ireland of this country? Because most Ireland has been isolated. Ireland is the junction point where the water is catching the trench. But there is no value added towards the, uh, the Highland area. More needs to be done. I'm looking at the area of government polluting tax from consumer towards water supply. Uh, there is more need to be done in the area of upgradement. Because since in those days of independence to now, we are perfect. But there is no more value added. What is the ministry doing? Is it about receiving or collecting tax from people? I'm looking at the area of the supply of this water. Most of the private institutions are benefit directly, but the consumer are not. People are now suffering over one, two, and not a month by having no water. What is the ministry doing? It's not about talk and do. And also in the area of Guma. Guma engage more of the private sector. Why not about the consumer? And in the area of supplying water, most activities have been entrenched by private sectors, by ignoring the, the, uh, uh, say the private sectors towards entrepreneurship. What is the ministry doing about this area of water? Thank you very much. And, and lastly, sir, is about the Minister of Works. No, you can. When uh, we go for the second set of questions, you'll have an opportunity for that. It's about five now uh, for uh, Guma, so let them respond and come back. We're referring to water, smaller water sources like the ones we have in, in the hilltops. What, what? Let him repeat the question. Ah, it's okay. Sorry, Bumpa, go ahead. Make it short, please. Exactly. Thank you. For the area of an island, it is an adjunction point hmm. where water intersect from one area to another. We have 145 islands in Twitter. There is no improvement about that island. That's how we have the blockage of water in various areas, especially in Twitter. So how can you elaborate about the island? Thank areas? you. Thank you very much. So, hydrants are points where you can extract water in case of an emergency. No, not like that. We are the junction point where water flows. We have it in so many areas. Even here, we have an island. 
The junction is here. Valves. Okay, maybe it's valves. Yeah, they are valves. Valves. Yes. 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 Almost every day there's a defective valve, and, we, and when we find out, find out, we move in and replace those valves. For all the valves we have, the big ones and the small ones, I think uh, they're doing the job that they're supposed to do. Thank you very much. Minister? Yeah, uh, somebody asked me about uh, the PTS road that is being done by Gento, and the road is not making progress. I'm not too clear of this road. Are you talking about road that uh, Gento is constructing in Freetown or yes, elsewhere? Because yes, there are so many roads that uh, they are doing. What? In Freetown, Gostom, so PTS. Okay, well, yes, it was a bit slow, but uh, now that it uh, has been paid, uh, we should expect that uh, it will expedite, you know, works on that particular route. I don't know. Uh, the second question that I think my God has already answered to it, you know, is that uh, road works that have been interrupted by utilities, either because of delay in the relocation of utilities or something. Yes, this is a problem that we have been facing, but uh, as a sector, we have been working collaboratively with, with all other stakeholders to make sure that uh, we try to uh, minimize the delay. In fact, uh, though it is not yet really a policy, but uh, uh, we have agreed that uh, going forward, contractors would have to be giving the contracts not only to build the road but also to relocate all utilities so that it makes it easier sure. okay. you know and quicker sure. for road works to start and to be completed on time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, before we take uh, the next set of questions I'd like to recognize uh, uh, Mr. Mambu, Charles Mambu. He heads uh, a consortium of uh, civil society organizations uh, with the bias on infrastructure uh, development roads, I mean, across the country. Mr. Mambu, on behalf of the Ministry and the Deputy Minister, we would like to welcome you to this press conference. And uh, we will move on to the next set of questions. Would you like to say something, sir? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mr. Minister. I'm part of this team. Uh, <coughs> thank you again. Let me start with the interministerial committee and uh, what attachment there. I think it's very good, Honorable Minister of Works. However, with long standing experience, let me say this, could not, this is not the first time that we are having government setting up committees like those. Uh, we only hope and pray that the goals of those committees could be met and there will be a timeline, you know, for. <laughs> the people of Freetown and Sierra Leone in general, you know, to see the actual activity and outcome of this committee. I will share a practical experience with you. Uh, Mr. Director General for uh, Guma, I think the first activity that the people do does on this area is setting fire on the bush. And I tell you, most people describe Sierra Leone as a web. Sometimes somebody will hide something and say, let's find it, and he steps on it. And that's why sometimes some of these answers, you don't get them. If you go down to those areas, and you really do your, your independent and inside investigation, one of the results that you can actually get is that most of those buildings, most of them, high rank buildings, are owned by people that have the resources. And in most cases, these people are very difficult to be moved from one point to another. Mr. Minister, I hope and pray that you stay in that position quite longer. But I'm telling you, after you, that green belt will be shifted again. <laughs> Look, this is just practical. We are seeing green belts 
uh, originally, according to history, was at 23. Today, you know where it is. <laughs> after you, it's going to be seated. Those who will come in before, uh, after you, those who will come in as lands minister, after this, we have to sit them again. It has been seated many times. People have died in the process of sitting those people. And you know what? Nobody takes action. There was a time I was a member of the, the board of directors for the National Protected Area Authority. In one of our board meetings, we agreed at that meeting that we need to protect the Kumadan at Regent. You know what? One of our board members has the biggest house and the most expensive house built in that town, <laughs> and it was never moved. These are just practical. So he, he, we, we agree with the government setting up the interministerial committee, but what should be the outcome? And you have to take note. You know, sometimes we blame you, the government, but if you also don't decide to take the blame to do the right thing, to get the system working, then the blame will continue on, on you. Because if you really take active action that people will actually see, believe me, they will not be sitting those uh, green bags. Go and put the military and the police. And some of them, most times they are there, you have people with guns. You know, the gunmen are here, they will tell me that when they stay there as long as that land belongs to them, it becomes there. <coughs> because no other other people will dare to come there when I have a gun to protect my land. They will tell you, excuse me, I know you are not part of them. Those who are with us at that point. You know, so, but these are just practical reality. We are involved in, in these matters on a daily basis. So we want to see actual government actions taken by this committee. Because after you, we don't want to be here again and say, please, we are sorry, the green bed has again visited. On the roads, we want to thank the minister and the government of Sierra Leone, you know, for the work they have actually The government is continuity. Very soon, the, the Magbele Bridge, Mamban, and others will be inaugurated. You know, it's continuity. And for us who are campaigning on human rights and democracy, that's normally what we say. You will be here for 10 years after some time you go. So we, we want to commend the minister for what it, there is lots to be done. There are lots of road yet to be constructed, to be maintained, to be paid in Sierra Leone. But I think from the presentation we have done and the actual reports that we have, which we just presented to you, will give you more details about the status of the road as we go along and not too far in <coughs> with the approval of the minister. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mangu. I'm sure your 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 points were made, well made and uh, your points have been well noted by by the minister. And <coughs> I'll now move on to questions. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Um, my name is Ali Mamijalo, I'm for our police neighbor. Um, I'm going to replace the statement for direct this question to it's not passive, it's a question really, but to draw the attention of the Minister of Works. Uh, that has to do with there is a bridge in between uh, Kafubulom and Loko Masama actually. And that bridge was earlier constructed by the community people. Um, that has to do with the coconut wooden um, tree that was cut across. So that bridge actually that is that has been now brought broken, you know, plays an important role because to economic and education. Because we have schools in those communities, these schools, two communities. So I just want to draw the attention of the Minister of Works to take that into consideration really. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. Uh, next question, the gentleman at the back. <laughs> constructed in 2016 to 2017. Today from Fabero to me, Eastern Police, we have a lot of photos there. And I'm not, not missing any effort by the Ministry of Works to address that, that problem. And again, guard streets, 
guard streets is also another important road that could have reduced the congestion of traffic at Kisi Road or Frame Road, but yet it is yet to be included into the construction projects under the Ministry of Works. Then we also want to have a detailed aspect of the roads that are yet to be constructed and those that are already been constructed. The other one that is very much important is the hillside bypass. The hillside bypass has a very significant role in terms of reducing traffic in the eastern part of the municipality, but yet the process, I mean the construction process at that that's I mean, part of the, the, the city has been very slow. So I really want you to give us an analysis why we will have a slow in the construction of uh, the hillside and pass. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I'm, I'm sure with regards to the last question, I did hear the minister saying that it will be completed before Let's the see. end. Project, project yes. will be completed by 2022 before the end. So that should be one of them, but he'll have an opportunity again to respond. Uh, yes, the gentleman of the white. Yeah, my question goes to the Minister of Works. I am Ian Gaudia from Slena. And the question here is, and the people, because like you made mention of a lot of um, infrastructural development going on within the country. Specifically, I'm looking at Kono, um, Guinea, which you made mention of. The people of Kono would want to know when is this construction starting and uh, when it will be completed and also who is funding that project there thank you thank you very much uh, yes no 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 of the most user but of course I'm listed on the Sky Radio uh, permit me, sir, to ask this question um, to our uh, Honorable Deputy Minister of Information because it's something that's very, very much worries of the general public. Can I, sir? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, sir. If you were watching this very broadcasting service, uh, you will see um, an information rolling on the screen that reads that the Sweden Embassy in Russia uh, says that the Sudanians in Ukraine are safe. This information is very much more useful. Taking into consideration that, as I'm talking to you, that more than 2 million people have been evacuated in that country, that is right. And um, African students in um, Ukraine had to find it out with the uh, respective governments to be rescued. Um, how special are Sweden's to be to be so safe? Thank you. Um, uh, can I come into the Minister of Works or probably be such as Mabu? Who I think um, is, a, is a monitoring officer, uh, is monitoring the works in the uh, industry in this country. Um, yes, sir. Um, you've educated us about the significant work that the BUI procedure has done in terms of work construction in this country. Uh, but you've not mentioned anything about the uh, number of ports also in the capital city which are actually, um, um, pardon me to say, disgraceful in the eyes of the public eyes. Uh, uh, my next question is for the Guma uh, Valley Managing Director, sir. Yes, sir, you would agree with me that since this. Um, statutory instrument was passed in Parliament in May 2013. Uh, barely 11 years have elapsed. And the catchment, the Gumba Valley catchment has always been the, 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 the area for debate. And there's very press conference, by your and and not your very self. That one would have been written, written a book and sold it at a high price, or many sales in New York and London. Yes, sir. Can I ask you, sir, if you if the government of the Republic of Sweden can conduct, can conduct a, a rapid, massive products to, to, to trap down extra rogues, why can't you equally do the same to cash down all these people who are violating uh, the rules uh, that catchment, doing fully well that it may contribute to the loss of lives of, and property of many Sweden Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, the gentleman of that. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have uh, two final questions. Thank you so very much, I'll come back to you. We'll have, uh, we'll have uh, two final questions. We can come back to you, you, and then Bomba. You can take the last slide. Thank you. Um, Mr. Minister uh, works. The narrative is good, but like, um, I didn't get any financial cost of these rules, the financial aspect of it. And um, going further, I would have loved um, the road maintenance fund, but I'll ask you directly, sir about feeder roads. 
with forms um, being disposed by the road management um, fund. These feeder roads, most of them are not um, showing any value for money. I could say that because um, we've been to most of these roads and they are not serving the intended purpose. The trunk roads are good, but the feeder roads, they are murky. And um, so water resources. These activities that are now being going on in these places, um, I would like to refer to them as human and inhuman activities. And um, housing development is key to all of these places. The Sierra Leone Police in, the, in last week um, press release um, have deployed, supposed to have deployed, um, a joint team at the Guma Valley catchment area. But I didn't get any um, feedback from these deployments. And again, with forest guards, I didn't add anything significant about the forest guards. And these people have the mandate, they've been mandated, you know, to secure these um, catchment areas, especially these green belt areas. Of course, there is a need for us to re-establish <coughs> the green belt. Um, we cannot compromise that one. Um, if that is so, what are the immediate action that we need to do? to re-establish this green belt. Most of the encroachers are, are influential people. I like to put it that way. So we need strong institutions, strong laws, strong laws to re-establish our green belt. If that is not done, then Freetown will run dry and test in our homes, in our schools, in our hospital. And this will be deplorable. And it will not be good to hear in the ears of development partners and even people who are Sierra Leoneans and proud to be Sierra Leonean. And we are boasting of Freetown as the only capital city that is on the verge of running short of water, which is our natural resources. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, don't stand sick in Houston. Um, I stand to be corrected, but I noticed that um, an honorable member is here and uh, supposedly represent the, the the committee on water resources and a part of uh, their function is oversight and uh, i want to ask the the honorable uh, member of parliament no you can't you cannot what you want to ask him to do <laughs> Yeah, but uh, you, you know, want to ask a question? Ask him, ask him, ask him, ask him. Yes. Um, okay, well, Mr. Minister, what I want to know, you know, there is a committee on water resources in Parliament, and uh, um, uh, most times they, 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 they went on an oversight. And so I would, I, I would like to know what has been the, the decision of the committee on water resources uh, with regards to encroachment of catchment areas. Thank you. Yes. And then Bomba. Yes, yes. Another last question. Um, actually, with regard to uh, inside my password, uh, some of us who are living along that place, when it comes to the dry season, we can feel the, the pitch of it, and again, the rainy season as well. So, sir, Mr. Minister, I just wanted to give us a uh, concrete time as to when this project will be completed. He did say he did say by the end of 2020. So one of the projects he mentioned that are going to be completed before uh, the end of 2022. Bompa, please don't look at me to question. Exactly. Just one, please. Bompa again, sir. Uh, the minister for water resources. Looking at the mining aspect in the north towards timber, it has been created a shortages of water. What are the responsibility? of your institution to avoid droughts, especially in the north, because of timber. Thank you very much, uh, No, please, 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 please. Uh, let me ask the Minister of Works. Yes, you see, people ask one question. Let me ask my Minister of Works. It's about government of continuity, as you, as you rightly say. In the area of continuity, what due to Caesar, due to Caesar. Why not place your predecessor towards wood construction? And for the Minister of Internal Affairs, uh, 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 easier, let's take cognizance of the North. We observe lawlessness, recklessness, and indiscipline 
in an increase. What is your role to fight the area of the new direction? Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, I'll, I'll come back to the Honorable Minister, Director Guma, to answer to the questions. Uh, thank you very much uh, to the those who posed the questions. But I would first start by responding to the concerns raised by my brother Mamou. Are you still here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, those are really genuine concerns. We also have similar concerns. Notwithstanding that, we try to put things in place to ensure that this doesn't repeat itself. That is why I don't know the composition of the previous committees, but this, the, the composition of the current committee uh, represents all ministries that has to do with protecting those the environment. That's why the chair is the environment okay. this time. Okay. And you have the forces that are also there to ensure that there's any law they can impose at those laws. Um, you know, many people don't know, but it's very clear from studies done, we already have a master plan for providing water for the entire western area. And it's been very clear from that study that um, without protecting the catchment areas here to get water from that from, from, from the catchment area, even if you get that from Rupert, it's not the adequate to the Western area. So we want to ask everybody, those who are listening, the community members, the, the press here, all of us should ensure that we don't lose these catchment areas. If you lose these catchment areas, maybe the only other option would be to, to go to the sea and get water from the sea and change it to clean water. And it's very expensive. The capita cost and the running cost is not going to be afforded. Yeah. So you can see that um, it's something which we need to ensure that it doesn't continue. When you say uh, community leaders play a part, that's why we involve them. One of our activities is to engage the communities. That's why we have community awareness raising. We, we, we engage them, we talk with them, and ensure that whatever law we put together, they'll be part of it and they were part of monitoring the, uh, the various department areas. Uh, somebody spoke about uh, police deployment and forest guards. Police deployment, I'm going to leave to the Minister of Internal Affairs, he's there. Forest guards, I will leave to the Deputy Minister of the Environment, he's there. They will talk to that. And um, they, they're also asking uh, immediate action to ensure that this doesn't continue or what has happened is reversed. That's one of the activities we are going to take. We come and give a press briefing. After that, we will soon hear the public notice advising the communities of people who are encroaching or who are undertaking activities in this area to resist. We will hear that in the, the press briefing. Thank you. The other is engaging the communities at the ministerial level as well as at technical level. And the other is demarcating these areas with physical structures, pillars, where you should not go beyond. If you go beyond, I will say that I'm global now. We will, we will not allow you to continue with it. Then the, the security people as the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Defense, of course they are mandated by cabinet to support this committee, to ensure that they provide the necessary support in terms of manpower, sector, to ensure those laws are put in place, they are guided. So nobody will go and encroach into those areas. Somebody asked me about what decisions MPs have made. I'm not an MP, so I don't know their decision. Maybe you should wait for you should contact the parliament to tell you what decisions they have made concerning, concerning catchment or what are catchment areas. Timber logging in the north. Maybe I should leave that again to the Minister of the Environment. But of course, I know that when we are reducing the forest cover, as the MD rightly said in his presentation, it affects the water regime. Right? The rainfall pattern will change. Like last year, the dam used to, to, to fill in August. 
But last year, it only, that only happened in September. And for a shorter period of time, because we are clearing the first cover. So you, have, you know that it has that effect on it. I think with that, I'll just hand over to what the, the Minister of Interior, Internal Affairs, rather, to, to, to respond to, to the issue of uh, police deployment. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, all. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Um, we're talking about police and uh, or security of these catchment areas, the mangroves, um, areas where we're having challenges regarding our very survival. Um, we should understand that water is life, and as Sierra Leoneans, if we're nationalistic, if really arbitratic, the water catchment, our mangroves, our forests, should be held dear to us. Um, we seem to be engrossed with concretizing all our areas, all our greenery. In many cities in the world where you go today, they have areas left for green, for green so people can live, so people can breathe good air. But in Sierra Leone, we're doing the opposite. We're destroying that which will make us survive, our water. Um, we, as security, the security sector, are very aware of this, and uh, we've been educated on this um, by Kuma Valley, by the Ministry of Environment, by Water Resource Resources. Um, we don't want to be in a situation where Sierra Leone, a viable country like we have, becomes a desert, where water becomes a serious, very serious issue. Um, Today, as we see it, we see a lot of the yellow rubbers, the red, yellow cans everywhere, people searching for water, going for water. Um, and it's our little children that we send out early in the mornings to go do this. Um, women go out to go get fetch water for the men, while the men we sit down and destroy these forests using our hands, breaking stone stones, burning charcoal. Uh, the security sector is there to protect, we'll protect. We'll come in here, we'll see a fire team or a section um, being deployed to protect. And we know just as um, Mr. Mambo has just said, after some time, these people become landlords. And so we're trying to change all that in that when we deploy, it should not be for a long time should be for a short time because we understand that that's how it becomes um, and so we are we are serious about it this time because it's for my own survival um, all of our survival I mean it's serious if you go if you have time go up to the dam and just see the level of water that should be there and you see the greenery that should cover the dam take a trip up to the dam Guma Valley Dam and just see what's happening there see the buildings that are going up around the area now if there's a disturbance or there's any kind of disaster in the vicinity of that town millions or thousands of people will lose their lives thousands of people and it will cover so quickly in a short space of time many areas will be covered with water and so we are the security sector take it very seriously and when you talk about indiscipline that's the indiscipline that I want us to focus on. Many times we, we're out there with people, they, we can take boys out there, young men, to go do the stones for us. It's people with money, people in authority that do these things. And so that's where indiscipline comes from. And His Excellency, the President of Sierra Leone, Brigadier retired Dr. Julius Madabio says we came in here when he came when we came in we have three wars that were fighting three peaceful wars in discipline corruption and poverty and so um, when we when we look at ourselves as a nation now we're talking discipline I don't know how you got here today did you come by bike or did you drive I'm sure if you came by bike you didn't wear a helmet. That's indiscipline. Many of us here came by bike and they didn't put a helmet on, no. 
Most of us came by a vehicle or a car. Did we put our seatbelts on? No. That's indiscipline. Many of the things that we do, we think it's only, we refer only to the young and the youth, we say they're indiscipline, but most of them is supported by us. What's the big ones? The big people. They support the indiscipline. They're back on the indiscipline. Don't build a house beyond the green belt. Who builds a house? Who has money to build a house? All of us here sitting here, the big ones, and we, we go out there, fight for the land, and pay for the land, and we build outside of the green belt. And we know we should not be pulling down the trees, but yet we ignore that. We do not consciously think that, oh, let's go sand mining. I have a truck. I buy a truck too, and then doing sand mining. Then taking out the sand from where it is. We're destroying our own country, our own country, the beauty of our country. And then the sea takes over. Well, I have a truck. I need to make money. Who buys a truck? Is it the young man, the youth? Is I, you and I, who sit here around these tables? We buy the trucks. We have the power, we have the money to do most of these things. And then we are, because we are the financiers of this destruction. So the indiscipline comes from us. That's what's in the increase. Our greed comes from us. Our greed is the indiscipline. And that comes from us. And so when we think about it, when we talk about indiscipline, we're talking about corruption, we're talking about recklessness. Let's think about ourselves, not point the finger. As a nation, as a nation, as people who love our nation, the things we should be thinking about is how do we stop? How do we create water? How do we stop our children from going to get the child, the girl child goes there, gets the water, and what does she do? She's in line, she waits, and then some man says, Oh, come, let's go. Let me talk to you before your turn comes. That's how they get pregnant. Getting water, fetching water in the morning for us, for our recklessness, for our indiscipline. We need to protect ourselves well, together as a nation. That's the security we need. To protect ourselves, the water catchments, the areas where we have threats. We talk about the deforestation. In the deforestation, we're talking about the provinces. We talk about it. Now we don't have areas for cows. The Zangelua grass, the called Zangelua grass, it's overtaken. The cows can't eat it. And so the cows are coming down south. Now the southerner, the cat, the cat, the the the, the crop rearer doesn't know about cows. He's he's very fit. He's scared of the cows, and the cow destroys his crops, and so in turn destroys the cows, and there becomes war. That's the kind of war that starts that concerns me because people are now fighting for their livelihoods. That's the indiscipline and the recklessness because of what our needs are called cutting down timber. The forest is not covered. The sun shines. The grass grows from it, and it's becoming a desert. The north is becoming a desert. And we should be, we should be really concerned about this. Look at the muddy waters, look at the sewa, look at the moa. They're muddy. It's all mud because of mining. Who mines with dredges? People who can buy dredges. You know what one dredge costs? It's people with money. These are the people who have the indiscipline. This is where corruption and recklessness comes in from the top, from people like us who have money all over, and we encourage these things, we support these kind of activities. People now, we used to, when I used to drive by the Sewa of Mwa, you have people who fish, now you don't see that. You don't even see people washing or wash and swimming in these places anymore. Some of them are dried up. These are serious things we have to consider. As Sierra Leoneans, we have the future to look after. A nation of people who don't act after their children or their grandchildren, they are not, they're zero, they're destroyed. If we continue to encourage these kind of activities, the recklessness, the indiscipline. Yes, we want to build houses. Yes, we need to, but let's do it responsibly. We can do it with responsibility. We, we have to be responsible. We, take, we have to take our future in our hands. I don't want to hold the floor for too much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Thank you so much for this information. We are gratified as 
Cameroon Ministry of Arts and because our ministry has left the place recently less than two weeks before the accident took place, advising them to stop what they are doing. But they did not stop. And we know we all know the story. The type of farming also we undertake <coughs> slash and bomb is extremely difficult to maintain our water source. Therefore, that is one of the reasons whenever our ministers go to cabinet, they emphasize as to inland valley swamp that volumes of bad diversity in there. We move from the highland, <coughs> we come to the sun because we want to leave the tree there, there to protect our catchment. And that is what we are practicing now in Sahara. We should be practicing Sahara. It's all over. We have, right now, we have MCC officers, consultants in town. Um, people are advised, they are in the position to support us. But we are refusing to adhere to what they are telling us. When you come to free time now, uh, the minister maybe he forgot about the issue we are just talking to ministers of it about watershed, about wetland. That's why I'm thanking Mr. Kasman. Most of the issues, one particular person gave is complimenting her to somebody. That's whenever somebody is here to ask you why are you doing this, this is what is complimenting her to him or her. That is not good. That is not good. So, Minister said if all of us here yeah, say we are going to protect, here is the green bed. If the tribal hands in that area, they are not colluding with those who are buying that land, with those who are constructing, that will not take place. And somebody was asking, how are we going to protect this green mess? Well, that is why we were starting with you. You are going to assist us, the fourth assist. Minister will just say, eat, wait, and say, we are taking it gradually. We are starting with you people. And everybody knows. We know later on that you cannot go beyond this area. If you go beyond that area, it means you want to violate the law of this nation. Again, we are talking about what can we do to enforce that. The parliamentary committees, the cabinet committees that was created, if you look at the composition carefully, you will know that I'm talking to my brothers and sisters here now. You will know that you have military men in there, you have police in there. If that law is being put in place carefully and the regulations is put in place carefully, you just go beyond it, then you will know. I know my internal affairs minister. It's no nonsense, man. So therefore, henceforth, we are going to protect that green bed. Want you people to assist us. We will just ask that. Thank you so much, Mr. Minister. Thank you for, for the ministry and yeah, giving us this forum for us to address our brothers and sisters. We all are going to work together to achieve what we plan. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Minister. There is uh, one final question for the Minister, which uh, concerns uh, Sir Union in Ukraine. I think the Deputy Minister would like to answer to that very quickly and then that will allow the ground up. There was a question. There's a question for what? Yeah. Maybe if I may. So can we? Uh, because I'm thinking uh, yeah. the, the, the journalists have to go to the press. Yeah. Yeah. So that is story. So okay. you can do those in one minute. So yeah. just, okay. I mean, do them like a left point. Well, okay. Well, the broken bridge at Lokomasama, I'm aware there's a problem, a procurement problem. But I can assure you that uh, I will engage DG uh, after this meeting to see how things can be done. Without process.
Hot holes in Peter. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am concerned. Same so the president and others. Uh, the problem has been procurement process. You know, I think it takes a long time. But uh, I can assure you that uh, before the events, you will begin to see these potholes uh, being fixed. Not only in Cape Town, but uh, countrywide. Hillside by Pass Road. I don't know when last we are there. You know, uh, now it's not slow. And I can assure you that um, by June, go there and see. There is significant progress going on there right now as I speak. Same also for the Tokyo Road. Uh, the Kono Guinea Border Road. Uh, it is being contracted by a Guinean company called Gicopress. Uh, and uh, they are now mobilizing resources as I speak. In the next one month or two, work should start. Not less than two months. Uh, the, the payment system or the funding system is a, a pre financing system, a pre financing one. Uh, the contractor will finance ten million dollars to do at least the first ten kilometers in one year. After government will begin to pay, yeah. So it is not uh, a donor fund that is going to be paid by the government of Sierra or based on this arrangement, the financing arrangement. Uh, no financial cost for road works. Uh, well, if you can remember the last time I came, I think I gave you a lot of information uh, regarding the cost of roadworks. This time I didn't do it, you know. Yeah. But uh, next time we are sure that uh, I will do. Feeder roads, that uh, the feeder roads are not good. Well, I agree with you to some extent, but not all feeder roads that are being done by us. Uh, during our own term of office, I can assure you that uh, we have improved significantly the quality of uh, feeder roadworks. The call paths, the bridges, are far better in terms of quality than in the past. And we will continue to maintain that. Uh, yeah, I think I will stop here so far. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mambu, would you like a minute? Yeah, I think. I want to share the passion of the Honorable Minister of Internal Affairs and to assure you that after your retirement, we have a space in civil society. Because you, yeah, you didn't talk like a politician. What yeah, 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 yeah. we are now looking at you yeah. is to put those of your words into practice. Yeah. Because in discipline is one of the factors that is actually bringing Sri Young down. Yeah. Yeah. We, we really want to see you much more yeah. active as you have actually said. And we don't have any doubt in you. You know, people who know you, they know that you are very uh, active in that line. You know, <coughs> colleagues, CSOs, and uh, civil society, media. and the media, yeah. let us always remember this. Any government in the world, but particularly in Sierra Leone, the 1991 constitution you know, gives government initially five years minimum and maximum ten years. 30 seconds. Yeah, there is nobody, there is no president that will have within a period of ten years that will be able to complete all his or her manifesto promises. Yeah. You will start a project, you will, not, you will not end it, and some other person will come and continue. And that is a trajectory that Sri Lanka and many other countries have been looking at. I wonder how many of you know that before 1998, or by 1999, the current CID building was burnt down. Vice President office was burnt down. Yeah. The Ministry of uh, the, uh, Finance. Police Headquarters was burnt down. Finance. Ministry of Finance, Treasury was burnt down. Yeah. By 2006, those, all those buildings were built to more than high at 40s. By 2007, it was a new government that occupied them. Yeah. This is how situations work. So sometimes we leave the politics to the politicians. Yeah. You understand? And with the record some of us have, there's still, as I'm talking, massive road work going on. That doesn't mean there are also not massive problems within the road sector. There are. There are very serious problems within the road sector, including the portal. And one key factor mm -hmm. to that is the funding. As I'm talking to you, Toke, Lombard Toke Road has taken 20 years. It's not been completed. You can see how many governments have come and gone. 
Uh, uh, his side by pass road is 18 years today as we are talking. M maybe there are some people who are not even born to that them. Government have come and gone. But I'm, like the minister said, those two roads will be completed. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Deputy. Uh, Deputy Minister, would you like to? The question okay. on, on, on Sierra Leoneans. You. Okay, man. On the, on, the, on the issue of, uh, of Sierra Leoneans. Well, uh, the important thing to note is, as in every other country, for Sierra Leone, our foreign policy is anchored on our national.